some of the response I got from the last video uh, when I told you guys about my myoptic degeneration and the possibility that I could go blind in that eye if it if it gets any worse um, or much worse or whatever uh, there was a discussion of intelligent design and the idea of like look John your eyes are failing where's the intelligent design um, to be had in this situation this is a discussion I think we're all familiar with so I want to throw my two cents in first I want to say I don't support necessarily the idea of intelligent design if you conceive of intelligence in the particular way I think is justified and second I would propose as a countermeasure that we as theists suppose intentional design intentionality is really at the heart of the better intelligent design arguments um, and it's just this bit of intelligence the idea of uh, whatever what it, what does it mean to be intelligent I would propose to you that being intelligent is just the ability to recognize patterns and perhaps make predictions off of them um, but there's a distinction between say an intelligent human being and then this conception of God being perhaps intelligent because for you and I we don't know everything we don't have a crystal ball to know precisely how the universe works our intelligence is a means to discovery um, of how possibly the world works for God being the basis of all these patterns that we are recognizing in the world intelligence either doesn't apply in God's case or it needs to be understood in a particular way God isn't going to discover anything out of creating the universe there's nothing to discover he had to intend for it to happen um, if he has the capacity for knowledge on the top of uh, his capacity for intention I think it's logical to follow that he knows what he's intending because of that the idea that God is you know just not very smart he might be the creator but he's just not very smart because we have all these problems I think is a very naive perspective let me propose you this on a larger take take yourself back a little bit and look at this on a, in a very theoretical philosophic kind of way God if we assume God exists and that God is the basis of everything existing beside himself then how are we to suppose that any creation of God because it is distinct from God the creation of God is not going to have some form of limitation at least relative to God God is omnipotent and we can be certain of this philosophically only in its relativity to our existence omnipotent omnipotent to what compared to what what's your criterion omnipotent compared to the physical reality if we assume God created the physical reality there's nothing for him to discover there's nothing for him to intellectualize about there's nothing for him to contemplate okay and there is no science fair experiment that he could conduct on you and I as twisted as life might seem that he will get anything out of some people suppose that perhaps he's not looking for knowledge he's just looking for a sadistic pleasure this is pretty naive this is pretty lame because think about it the idea of pain and pleasure are going to be experienced by one things that are aware which we can assume God is but also things that are limited pain and pleasure are a result of our aware existence as a limited being if we assume God exists then by what means do we assume he's limited not by this world obviously um, and by any and when we talk about God in this in the particular way that I do anyway as the basis of causation that is to say God is the cause of causation that we experience in the natural sciences um, the idea of pain and pleasure even sadistic pleasure watching all of us us little worms squirm around in this in the dirt at his feet it doesn't follow 
it doesn't follow at all because we can't assume that God is going to get anything out of that, even pleasure, because God is not a limited being. All right, so the idea of intelligence perhaps is more clear now that I, I don't know. Perhaps God is intelligent, but it would be only in the, the sense that God knows everything to begin with. Why? Because he is the basis of it. Okay, fine. So the reason I have bad eyes or that you might have a bad back or bad knees or bad hips or whatever or autism or mental retardation from birth, these kinds of things, is not the result of uh, God's incompetence, but rather um, the fact that anything that God would create besides himself is going to be limited. And in an aware being, that limitation is going to be expressed as suffering. Um, machines have limitations, but unless the machines are aware, the machine will not suffer. So the question is not why do we suffer? The question is why are we aware of our existence? Why are we aware of our existence? And, uh, and certainly a, a lot of people will have their own take on that. So as a, um, as a counter to the idea of intelligent design, I would simply say it's intentional. Intentional design. Not because God sat down and contemplated how he was going to create the universe. I think it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. Rather, we can understand, of, understand it in terms of intentionality. And then, in that way, I think, have a really good starting position for the next conversation that we might have about what it means to be personal. The idea of being a person. Not that personness means that you have a beard and you sit on a chair in the sky, but rather that you have the capacity for intention. The question then is, if we can really call that personness, are animals people? Do animals have intentions? They might be aware, but do they have intentions as well? Can they be aware of their intentions? Do they deliberate, deliberate as we do? and so on. And are they aware of that deliberation? I don't know. Interesting stuff, though. But in the end, intelligent design? Yeah, maybe. But more importantly, intentional design. God is smart because he's the basis of everything to know about. He's the creator of all things to know about. And no, God cannot be a sadistic Uh, I'm editing expletives in my head here. A sadistic person or a sadistic being because we cannot assume logically anyway that God would have any form of limitation that would need to be sustained by any kind of sadistic pleasure or any kind of pleasure for that matter. All right.